Hi, I'm Corey. I'm a CPA and subject matter expert in financial accounting. And in this video, we're going to highlight the key details you need to know about shareholders' equity. We'll start off with a brief overview of what shareholders' equity is and where you can find it on the financial statements. Next, we'll talk about the key elements that make up the shareholders' equity balance using specific examples of how to measure and disclose it in the financial statements. Understanding how shareholders' equity works is crucial for both accountants and the business as a whole. So let's dive right in. Shareholders' equity is one of the key building blocks that holds the structure of a business in place. Along with assets and liabilities, it usually makes up a significant portion of a company's balance sheet. Assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity have a close relationship. In simple terms, assets are what a company owns, liabilities are what a company owes, and shareholders' equity is the amount left over for the owners. Shareholders' equity is extremely important because it's one of the first things that analysts, bankers, and investors look at when evaluating a company's financial health and stability. So now that we have a high-level understanding of what shareholders' equity is, let's dive into some of the specifics. Shareholders' equity is the value left over to the owners after the liabilities have been subtracted from the assets of the company. It's calculated as follows. Total assets minus total liabilities equals the shareholders' equity. Shareholders' equity is made up of two key components, the first being the funds that the shareholders have directly invested in the business in exchange for ownership equity, otherwise known as capital contributions. Generally speaking, with capital contributions, companies issue common or preferred stock in exchange for funds they can use to finance their operating and investing activities. This process is highly efficient when companies are structured as a corporation. This is because the corporate structure is set up to allow for the seamless transfer of shares to investors. Owners can very easily sell their shares without impacting the operations of the business, since the transaction takes place directly between the shareholders and does not involve the company. The second component of shareholders' equity is made up of the cumulative amount of income the company has earned over time and has reinvested into the organization. This is known as retained earnings. Retained earnings are the amount of profit that a company has left over after paying out all of its operating costs and dividends. The amount remaining represents the balance that can be reinvested into the company for things like new equipment and marketing. The retained earnings account accumulates these earnings over time and reports them on the balance sheet. In the event that a company is accumulating losses instead of profits, this would be reported in an account called accumulated deficit rather than retained earnings. As you can see on your screen, this is all reported on a company's balance sheet under the shareholders' equity section. In this example, you can see the two components that we just described, capital contributions and retained earnings. In this case, we can see the company has issued $100,000 of common stock in exchange for investment in the organization. These are the capital contributions. The company has also generated cumulative earnings in the organization over time of $505,000, which they have reported as their retained earnings balance. The value of both the retained earnings and capital contributions, when added together, will give us the total shareholders' equity balance of $605,000. Now that we understand the key elements of shareholders' equity, let's talk about a common misconception. Many business owners mistakenly think that their shareholders' equity value is the same value that the company would be worth on the market if they were to sell it. However, this is usually not the case. This is because the values reflected on a company's balance sheet are based on activities that took place in the past. Many of the items, such as assets, are usually recorded at the historical cost and don't necessarily reflect the fair market value that they would generate if they were sold in today's market. As a result of this, it's safe to say that the shareholder's equity value on the balance sheet reflects past business activity. On the other hand, when it comes to the valuation of the company, past business activity is only one component. To determine the value that a company could be sold for, the valuation usually includes future earnings expectations. Let's look at an example of how a company would measure and disclose their shareholders' equity, using the balance sheet from earlier as our starting point from year one. Let's say it's now year two and the company needs to raise funds, so they issue another $100,000 of common stock in exchange for cash. This would be recorded with the following accounting entry, resulting in an increase to the cash balance with a debit of $100,000 and a corresponding increase to the common stock with a credit of $100,000. 
If we take a look at their new updated balance sheet at the end of year two, we see that their common stock has now increased from $100,000 to $200,000. And that takes care of their capital contributions in year two. But we also need to look at their retained earnings. At the end of year two, the company looks at their income statement and sees they made a total profit of $65,000. They decide to pay out a dividend to their investors of $15,000 which leaves them with a total of $50,000 remaining to be added to their closing retained earnings balance. Looking at their new balance sheet, we can see their retained earnings has now increased from $505,000 to $555,000. We now have everything we need to calculate our updated shareholders' equity balance. If we add together the common stock and retained earnings, we now have a new closing shareholders' equity balance for this company of $755,000. And that brings us to the end of this video. Remember, shareholders' equity is an extremely important concept as it tells us the value that the shareholders are entitled to after the company's liabilities are paid off. Not only that, it's also used as a key indicator by banks and investors to assess the financial health of the organization. Now, while we just skimmed the surface here in this video, if you're interested in learning more, please feel free to check out our additional videos on many more related topics.